Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. Welcome! Today, I'm going to play around with some Linux. That's right, in my last video, what I did was I put Linux onto an older computer and then I loaded up RetroArch on there so that I could use it as a retro gaming system. Now, when I did it, I had to jump through a few ho hoops and there wasn't a lot of stuff that was straightforward. It was look something up, try that, that didn't work. But to get that working, I had to do something else. And to get that working, I had to do something else. Anyways, I am going to do a quick little video here about putting RetroArch onto this uh, Linux Mint system that I am using. And hopefully that'll help you save some of those old computers from the scrap pile so that you can have some retro gaming fun there as well. All right, let's jump right into it. And here we have my brand new fresh install of Linux Mint XFCE. So the first thing you wanna do is open up your favorite browser. Go to the RetroArch site, which is www.retroarch.com. You want to get RetroArch. Scroll down to the Linux and you want to download. Hit the install key and you get this uh, thing where you can either go to the desktop store or use the command line. Personally, I like using the command line. So what you would normally want to do is type in the stuff there, that sudo snap install retro arch. Make sure I spelt everything right. Yep, sudo snap install retro arch. Then it'll ask for your password. And I get the sudo snap command not found. Well, that means that the uh, snapped um, is not installed on this computer. So just want to install that. So then you come up with this package snapped has no installation candidate. So that's where I ran into a problem and I had to do a bunch of research. Now I discovered that what I've got on here is something called no snap, which is stopping snap from being installed. So what you want to do if you're getting this particular error message is Remove the no snap. So that's uh, sudo rm, standing for remove, except, slash, etc., slash apt, slash preferences dot d. Oops, and I spelt preferences wrong. So slash no snap dot pref. And now do an update with sudo apt update. And now, install snapped. See, and that's the part that I really had to look up and had a lot of trouble with was finding the no snap thing that was on here and finding out how to take that off. And like, I didn't even know the no snap was on there. So if you run into that problem, that's the part I had to do a lot of research on. So now I can do the sudo snap install retroarch. And there we go, it is now installed. So now what I wanna do is go down here and search for RetroArch. And we've got the run at RetroArch. So double click on that. There we go. 
So RetroArch is now installed. Now on here you've also got stuff like the flat pack. So if you want to install that, just click on that and it downloads it. So once it's downloaded, what you want to do is go into your downloads file and from here you want to open a terminal window. So you're already in the downloads file and then you can type in So you want to type in flatpak install org.libretro.retroarch lib, lib, flatpak ref. And yes, you want to do that. And yes. And once that is done, you can close all this out. Add retro arts to the desktop. And now you're ready to start making some games. So the next thing to do is find your favorite place to get your old ROMs from and uh, put them into a file. Personally, I like to put them on the desktop. It's easy to access. Okay, as you can see, I've put two files onto here, onto my desktop, RetroArch Games and RetroArch ROMs. The first one we're going to be looking at is RetroArch Games. So I've put a bunch of stuff in here, and as you can see, they're labeled Atari 2600, Coleco, PS1, and then these are all arcade games. Now, when you're putting the arcade games on, you can just put the zip file straight in and that seems to work out. If you unzip them, it doesn't seem to work. So for the arcade games, they have to be in zip files. Now from here, the first thing that I like to do is go to my settings and change my menu. Uh, this one's fine, but it's not my favorite one. I like the XMB menu myself. This is all personal um, preference, but for me, that's the one I like. So, and you have to, once you've changed it, you have to close and reopen. So, here we go. Now, what you want to do is first go and load some cores in. So for me, the one that I like the best for the arcade one that I've seemed to have the least amount of trouble getting things working on is the Final Burn Neo. And then we'll do the uh, Atari 2600 Stella. Oh, not that one though. We'll do 2023 Stella. ColecoVision. And this is just to go with the games, the systems that I've currently got on here. Sony PlayStation. Uh, Beetle, I believe, is the one I use. Now, to load those games up, you go to. Oops. Import content. Oops, wrong button. Import content scan a directory now that's the directory that they want you to put the games and stuff into it's down a long tree and I don't like using it so if we go down to home this will be different on everybody's system but that's the name of my computer home Ken so Ken is the name of my computer and then we'll go to my desktop and scan retro arch games and let's scan the entire directory. So doing this will scan each and every file that's in there, including everything that's in the Atari 2600 files, the Coleco files, the PS1 files. So now when we come over here, you can see that we've got uh, the PS1 games, the arcade games, ColecoVision games, and Atari games. So something like Atari, 
simply works by every time you first run a game, you've got to set the core association. So there, and now it should run. So there it is. Now, another thing that you can do is right from the thing here, if you don't want to waste too much room on your hard drive and you want to actually have the box art for the games, you can download thumbnails right at each game. So this is just downloading the individual thumbnails. And there you go. Now, when you go past this game, you can see the uh, box art comes up. Now, another problem that you're going to run into is some of these systems, like the Coleco, both the Coleco and the uh, PS1. Let's just try running a game here. And we get a no BIOS problem. And on Diablo, this is on the PS1, we get a firmware is missing error. So. Those are the reason that I have the RetroArch ROMs file. So you got to go on the uh, internet, find where you can grab those. There's plenty of uh, places uh, that'll point you to the right place to get the firmware and the BIOS and everything that you need. Put them in here into this file. And now I've got them here, but it's not reading it. Well, that is because If we look under directory, and then you want to go down to system BIOS. And as you can see, it's going by there. It's a really long uh, tree to get to that. And it's a little bit annoying to try and put things in there. So it's much easier to have that file right on your desktop. And we want to go back keep going back till we can go to desktop retro arch roms use this directory now it will look in retro arch roms for my uh, bios programs so back out of here now let's try diablo And it worked. So let's also try a ColecoVision game. And that worked as well. So there you go. And for the final thing, I showed you how to download the box art for each individual game, but what happens if you want to do all of them at once? Well, you go into the online updater and playlist thumbnail updater. And then you do um, each system by itself. can actually hit them all at once just to let it queue all the downloads and then this will take a little bit to do but so the ColecoVision ones are taking forever to download but the others are done so we'll just let that continue see as you can see we've got the box art arcades Some of the uh, ColecoVisions are downloaded. And of course, not, not everything has box art, so some of them, of course, won't have anything, but. There we go. That is, in essence, how to uh, get RetroArch on 
Linux Mint XFCE. And of course, this is not all the games that I'm putting on here. This is just the starting. There's going to be a lot more on here, but I can just put them on as I go, as I want to play stuff. So, All right, there we go. We have RetroArch running on the Linux system there. And yeah, just a lot of fun to play the old games on there. Arcade games, console games, whatever. You can even throw some different versions of computers on there to play the games off of those. It's just a lot of fun, and it's a new lease on life for these older computers. So I am very adamant about not letting these computers go into the e-waste piles and into the landfills and junk piles and whatever. Give them a second lease on life. Sell, a, sell your old computer if you don't want it on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Give it to a friend who might want to play around with it with something like this. Just don't scrap it. All right, well, uh, yeah, you may see the Patreons going by right now on the screen. Those are the people that are supporting me on Patreon, and I have to give them a big thank you. If you are interested, check out the link in the description for my Patreon channel. And uh, yeah, that is it for now. Um, don't forget that sharing a video like this will hopefully help keep some of those computers out of landfills and they will uh, help the channel out if you share, you like, you watch the videos, you uh, just all that youtube -y stuff. You know, it helps the channel out a lot, and I appreciate it a lot. All right, well, that is it for now. Until next time, I will see you later.